Now that is a beautiful map. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. Winter Field Day just came and went, and I wanted to try something a little bit different. I wanted to do a little bit of experimentation once again for Field Day. One of the primary things I did was use the FX4CR radio. Typically, I've been running the 705, and I love that radio, but I own that FX4CR, and it just doesn't get enough love. So I took it with me to serve as my primary HF radio this go-around. In addition to that, I also took the Kenwood D75. This one, though, instead of taking along a Digipeter, I took this radio along and used the Digipeter function built in. And I was really quite surprised at the way that worked. In addition to that, I carried the uh, FT5 as my personal radio, or the, the radio that I carried on my person. Now, going back to that D75 for a second, uh, I, in the past for Phil Day, I've used just a Raspberry Pi Digipeter that I've built. It's also the one that I've used uh, at the parade that we do each year. Uh, so I've used that one quite a bit, and I'm very familiar with it. But for the D75, I just haven't used it very often for the Digipeter function. In fact, I think maybe only once before. So that was another one of the experiments that I ran. Now, I used my InFed Half-Wave Kit as the primary HF antenna, and then I used the N9TAX Roll-Up J-Pole as my 2 meter antenna. Now, in addition to using the uh, D75 for APRS, uh, the Digipeter of APRS, with that N9TAX antenna, I also use the N9TAX and the D75 for my Winlink connections. So about once an hour, because of that Winter Field Day Challenge video that I put out uh, pertaining to Winlink, about once every hour, I would swap that radio over, use it to grab my Winlink messages from my own gateway, which was kind of cool. Um, I would download those, and then while I was responding or whatever, I would just go ahead and put that uh, radio back in action as a digipeter. So the D75 did multiple things for me. Now, I had a few objectives that I wanted to accomplish this year. My primary objective was to respond to all of those WinLink messages that I received during the uh, during the course of the day, as part of the Winter Field Day WinLink challenge. And I believe, if uh, my count was correct, I had somewhere around 110 WinLink messages that came through my inbox. So those are the ones that you guys sent and CC'd me on those messages. And hopefully, I didn't miss anybody. Um, as I was trying to get through those, but I hope that I responded to every single one of you. It was very brief, and uh, I admit not personal whatsoever, as I was just trying to keep up with the flow uh, as the day came and went. The other thing I wanted to do was, this was the first time that the Winter Field Day Association had broadcast a Winter Field Day bulletin, and they did that uh, in three different methods. So first of all, they used a uh, single sideband, which I was able to copy one of those. CW, well, I let that one go because I don't know CW. And then Olivia, and Olivia, believe it or not, is the one that gave me a little bit of trouble. Uh, and that's because of the radio. Well, it's not really the radio's fault. It's definitely my fault. When I was setting up FL Digi to use with that radio, remember, I'd been using it with a 705 with that particular laptop. Well, I failed to change the sound card to use this radio sound card. It was still sitting for my 705. So I completely missed the bulletin that came out in the morning. Uh, well, I missed over 50% of it by the time I figured out exactly what was going on. But I was able to copy the Winterfield Day Bulletin when it was put out again that evening. So I'll still count that as a success. And going back to uh, one of my previous videos, 
it was definitely my fault that that wasn't working. Now, I always like to tell you guys about the failures, and I'm just going to touch on the one brief failure that I had. Well, it was an extended failure, but it was the only minor failure that I had although it's not radio related specifically. I had been wanting to test a power station, so I carried it with me for field day, and I'm super glad that I did. Uh, for whatever reason, the heat in the RV is propane heat, but it requires a 12-volt fan to circulate the air. Uh, and it's got an igniter on that propane, so it's not a uh, pilot flame that's constantly burning. Every time it kicks on, you hear the igniter click a few times, and it will fire up the heat. Well, for whatever reason on this particular day, and I have seen this happen before, the igniter would not work from the batteries in the RV. It should have, but it didn't. So uh, the one other time that I've experienced this, I knew that if I could plug the RV up to commercial power, that I could get the heat running. So I used that power station and connected the RV with a uh, 110 volt adapter. I connected the RV to the power station and had heat for the duration of winter field day. Uh, weird thing is, is after I unplugged it uh, on Sunday morning, thinking that I would just get by because it wasn't really, really cold Sunday morning, well, lo and behold, the heat started working in off the RV battery. So uh, one of those phantom problems that I'm going to have to dig into a little bit. But honestly, other than the sound card, that was the only failure that I really experienced on field day. Now, I do an after action report every single time we have some event, and I will leave a link to that after action report down in the description if that's something you're interested in reading through. I go into a lot more details about setups and uh, what the weather was and what failures I did. Uh, so if you guys are interested in reading through that after action report, check the description uh, for that link. Now, while I wasn't uh, working on WinLink, which I, I spent quite a bit of time trying to respond to all of those messages, uh, I would help others troubleshoot their setups and try to help uh, get them up and running. Maybe it was a WinLink issue. Maybe it was an APRS issue. Maybe it was just a computer glitch that they were experiencing. I did spend a lot of time uh, trying to do that during winter field day, and I find that that is uh, one of my favorite things to do for field day and winter field day is to just pay it forward and help those other operators as they're trying to get their systems up and running. So I plan to continue doing that for my local group going forward on uh, these events like Field Day and Winter Field Day. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is that map. So what I did is I used WinLink to request uh, the WL2K Mobile's uh, report. That gave me a list of 100 of the closest stations to me that had filed a position report in the last 30 days. I use some tools that I have built into Pat Menu to go through and search for everybody that had put ACKWFD in their comment when they filed their position report. And then I converted all of those that had done so over to a POS object that I loaded into Yak, and that gives me a visual representation of where everybody is located on the map. I'm happy to report that out of the 100 stations on that list, I believe it was 83 of them participated in the WinLink uh, Field Day Challenge, our Winter Field Day Challenge. So thank you to everyone that participated in that. You guys made it a lot of fun. And I'll be looking to do something similar to this, if not this exact thing, again, come fail day. Guys, if you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you on the next one. Until then, 7-3.